Hello and welcome to Perspectives on the Voice of America. I'm Dimyake Mwakalelie. United States President George Bush last week signed legislation that would triple U.S. efforts to fight AIDS in Africa and around the world. The legislation, first introduced in 2003 for $15 billion, now commits $48 billion over a five-year period to a program to fight HIV, AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. Mr. Bush said 50,000 people in sub-Saharan Africa were receiving antiretroviral treatment for HIV AIDS when the program began in 2003. He said the program, known as PEPFA, or the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, now supports treatment for nearly 1.7 million people in the region. President Bush leaves office in January 2009, eight years after winning the White House in a disputed election. Critics blame him for the war in Iraq, the struggling U.S. economy, and the loss of U.S. prestige around the world. But despite that, even critics praise Mr. Bush for his policy toward Africa. VOA's Carolyn Turner has more. The terrorist attacks on the United States in 2001 unified much of the country behind President Bush. And those attacks led directly to the United States' war on terrorism the deployment of U.S. forces in Iraq and Afghanistan, and heightened security at home. But now, as Mr. Bush nears the end of his term in office, he is widely criticized for his handling of those wars. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi. This war must end. The American people have lost faith in the president's conduct of the war. Let's see how we can work together. A recent Washington Post ABC News poll puts Mr. Bush's approval ratings at 28 percent, lower than any president in history. Detractors blame him for the struggling U.S. economy, the decline of the American dollar, and America's dependency on oil. Former U.S. Vice President Al Gore. We're borrowing money from China to buy oil from the Persian Gulf to burn it in ways that destroy the planet. Every bit of that has to change. But that's not easy. America is addicted to oil, which is often imported from unstable parts of the world. That's why the State Department says it's in the U.S. strategic interest to partner with Africa. I asked the Congress to commit $15 billion over the next five years, including nearly $10 billion in new money, to turn the tide against AIDS in the most afflicted nations of Africa and the Caribbean. Even some opposition Democratic Party legislators applaud Mr. Bush's efforts in Africa. President Bush can be congratulated for understanding the importance of foreign aid as part of our national security. President Bush appointed the first U.S. ambassador to the African Union, and his administration developed a new Africa command, known as AFRICOM, to establish a military-to-military -military relationship with African nations. Twelve African countries are receiving U.S. grants for economic development from a newly created Millennium Challenge Corporation. Steve McDonald of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. The Millennium Challenge uh, account and, and, and the program is, is to date quite a success and it's in, it is injecting a lot of capital into Africa that wasn't there before. More than 98% of all African exports to the United States now enter duty-free through the African Growth and Opportunity Act. The president also launched the Africa Education Initiative. It provides scholarships, teacher training, and textbooks in 40 African countries. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice says 15 African countries are receiving funding for AIDS relief. We measure our success by the fact that in just the past four years, millions and millions of African citizens have received life-saving information about AIDS prevention. More than 1.6 million people have received life-enhancing medication, and nearly 6.5 million people, including orphans, are now receiving critical and compassionate care. But critics say the president's successes are threatened by his own policies. They say his domestic tax cuts, combined with increased war spending, will threaten the federal budget for years. Again, Representative Nita Lowley. So every dollar that goes to aid, whether in Africa or any part of the world, must be scrutinized, and we have to do it more efficiently and effectively. Democrats blame Mr. Bush for taking a $400 billion budget surplus when he took office 
and turning it into a $700 billion deficit over the last three years. But the president says the nation's economy will improve. The economy's growing. People are working. It's not as good as we'd like. But, um, and to the extent that we find weakness, we'll move. That's one thing about this administration. We're not, not afraid of making tough decisions. The president remains committed to his military response to terrorism. Uh, I would hope that whoever follows me understands that we're at war. And now is not the time to give up in the struggle against this enemy. Both of his possible successors are promising to do just that. Carolyn Turner, VOA News. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, I'm Dimiake Mwakalielie for The Voice of America.